Hey, we made it through another day's journey. Yeah. Yeah. Make it through hump night so we can uh, hear the word of the Lord. Oh, yeah. I guess uh, without further ado, let's say amen for Pastor Blaine. Amen. Amen. Grateful to have my son, yeah. uh, one of my sons, with me tonight. I'm grateful to see each and every one of you and my classmates here. All the way. Amen. Amen. Um, we want to talk tonight um, about why should you live a spiritual life? Why should you live a spiritual life as opposed to um, a carnal life? We don't like that word. Carnal, that's kind of like a like a negative connotation. But what I found is uh, it takes courage to, to, to live a good life. One thing that the Lord showed me today, Carl Ray, is, is that one of the tragedies of, of, of human beings is, is that they spend their life trying to figure life out instead of living it. Uh, life is, can't be figured out. It's not going to make no sense. How in the world that you, uh, uh, I was a celebrity, I don't know who it was, but uh, they went to an event and they left the child with the staff and uh, when they got back, the child was dead. Um, you, can't, you can't figure that out. You, you can't make sense out of that. And so uh, the best I know is, is not my will but thy will be done. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says that we have hope beyond death. Um, uh, Jesus, uh, he helped those who all their life, is in Hebrews, lived in fear of death. Um, as a man, 80 some years old, so sent the diary, I was around the other day, and he said he wasn't ready to die. You 80 some years old and you ain't ready to leave here. And I don't know, I, I, don't, I wouldn't attribute it to that he's not saved. I don't know whether he is or not. I didn't ask him. That's between him and God. But he just said he wasn't ready to leave. I told him I was. I was ready. I had somewhere to go. And I knew I couldn't stay here. Uh, and it takes courage to face the truth. I've been hooked to a many things since, since I've been here on this earth. A lot of things, um, uh, people's approval, a uh, uh, lot, lot of things, drugs, alcohol, sex, a lot, lot of things. Um, but what I come to find out, Vandal Jr., the, the root of all of that, and you can't, ever, you can't ever solve a problem until you find out what the root of it is. Um, the root problem uh, is... Uh, I was, my, I was hooked to fantasy. I got a Bible on it. The Bible said you shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. And that's why this is so vital. I thank y'all. I thank y'all. Y'all are the remnant. You are the little flock uh, who comes out and where I get a chance to do this because I benefit from this right here. Because I'm trying to learn how to live. I'm already saved. But I'm trying to learn how to live. And, and so Tango, how to live with, with, with as least amount of collateral damage as I can. Because we go through life just damaging folk. Uh, we do. Because mainly, like I said before, we are body, soul, and spirit. The soul part is our mind, our will, and our emotion. Uh, I had to go by the Walmart to take care of some business. And while I was standing there, another woman was over there. Uh, she wasn't as old as I am. Ain't too many people living as old as I am. Uh, it's just like, that's just how it is now. But uh, she was probably, I know she was, so she, was she was in the late 40s or maybe 50s. She wasn't no baby. And she was sitting over there on the phone because she didn't like what the folks had done and she was cussing. You know, just, I mean, she was, I'm talking about real cussing. I ain't talking about just little light words. And, 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 and I wanted to say something. I did. I, I wanted to say something. I wanted to say that's disrespectful. I wanted to say, 
uh, that, that's disorderly conduct, what you're doing. You're breaking the law now. We, we are not supposed to have to be subjected to this just because we're at Walmart. You, you, you done brought your ignorance and foolishness into my life and, and, and whatever. But uh, thank God that, 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 you know, from y'all teaching and y'all help, I didn't say nothing. I took care of my business, yeah. and I got away from that as soon as I can, and, 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 and I, I made it out of there. It didn't have to be like that, because I could have got into it with about it, because she, she, she offended me. That offended me, because, uh, you know, all of us like to sing this song right here. I don't bother nobody. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing we want to say, Cricket. I don't, I don't bother nobody. And I don't mean for you to be bothered me. Amen. So then we're just learning how to live. Yeah. And I would propose to you that the successful way to live is a spiritual life. But we want to look at that. You know, it's one thing to tell somebody something, but it's another thing to give them a reason for it. The spiritual right. Now, the problem with this is, is that this, I'm, what I'm talking to you tonight about is something that you have to take by faith. You can't see it. Not right now. But it'll show up. It'll show up in your life, the results of it. Now, as I said, most people live right here in the middle in their mind, their will, and their emotion. Most people, they put all of their confidence in, in, in how much sense they got. They got more sense. It's hard to deal with folk got a whole lot of sense. It's hard to deal with folk got a whole lot. It, it's hard to feel, deal with folks, sister, Ol sister, not, uh, sister Collins. It's hard to deal with folks that know everything. You, you ought to leave just a little room that maybe possibly it might be something in this universe that you don't know presently. They call that an open man. It's open man. Just maybe, just possible that you know. And, and then what will happen is, 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 that, is that maybe sometimes when you're in the presence of somebody that might know more than you do. Uh, I've got to the place now, I just tell folks that, you know what, I can't represent you. I just, just, I just, I just, I can't do it. I just had to do a lady like that uh, right, right before I left and everything. She's just talking, 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 talking. And I just found that I tell him, ma'am, I don't care about that. I don't care. And they told me, that's ma'am. I said, I don't talk to you 12 minutes and 49 seconds. I ain't made a dad. Well, you all not want to make a money off of everything you do. I said, yes, ma'am, I do. I said, ma'am, I do. This is, I'm working. When you talk to me, I'm working. Your lawyer's uh, stock and trade is his time and advice. I ain't got it twisted. You might think I do. But I know when you pick in my pocket and when you're trying to rob me. I know. Uh, and so and then she said, well, but then I, I call somebody that I can talk to and everything for you get through. I said, click. And then I block the number. I'm going to have some peace before I leave here. I'm going to Manassa. I'm learning. I gave you 12 minutes. You see what I'm saying? And I'm just trying to learn how to live. And people will tell you stuff. And it's not the truth. We've been told all our life, I believe the word. We've been told all our life, well, you got to, you know, you, you, you got to go with the word. You know, you got to have faith in what, but you don't want the word. Because the word said what it said. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to take it just like a T.I. is. I'm tired of living in fantasy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tired of living in fantasy. Here you are, that woman done told you 40 times she don't want you and everything, but you, you got to call her back and say, are you sure? Are you sure? You living in fantasy. I told Lady Deborah Sunday, I don't even call them red flags no more. It's a flag. When I see the flag and everything, okay, that's good. Have some courage. Have enough strength and get up about yourself in order to have. You, ain't nobody been the junior getting ready to stumble into a good life. Yeah. You ain't finna stumble into it. And a guy told me something one time I'll never forget. And that was, I was, I was complaining about that I, you know, we were at a meeting. I got to go home and I got to read books this big. I was in law school and y'all going to sleep. But I got to stay up all night reading and everything. And he told me this right here. He, he had no sympathy for me. He said, well, Vanda. 
He said, if it was easy, everybody would do it. It's easy. Okay, I got Bible on it. Jesus said, broad is the way that lead to destruction. And many, there'll be. Whenever you're somewhere and it's a whole lot of folk, brother, all the way, you probably ain't nowhere. You probably ain't nowhere. I know when I was uh, representing a uh, school board down here in Helena, it never was nobody at the meeting until it was a bunch of foolishness. Whenever it was somebody going to get fired or, or, or some, some kind of scandal or something came up and everything, they had, this was they had to put chairs all outside and everything. Whenever they was discussing the curriculum, or, or discussing the, the, how the money going to be spent, they so foolish. These folks dealing with millions of dollars and everything, you ain't even come to see how the money being spent. Because, you, you see, so, <sighs> fantasy. I got to have enough courage to see what is the truth. Give me Romans 7 and 18. I want to start right there. Why should you live a spiritual life? Is this the life that you should be living? <sighs> and and I, I know you just like me. I give myself a pass, brother, all the way on a lot of stuff because I realize this right here. You know, you look back and you say, dog, I shouldn't have done that. You look back and say, man, I shouldn't have beaten food with them people. Look back and say, man, I shouldn't have did. But you know what? I was doing the best yeah. I could do at that time. I promise you, I was doing, you talking about doing some thinking. I used to stay up all night thinking. And then go to sleep and miss work and get fired. Because I was up thinking about, about my work. I was trying to figure out how much I was going to make the overtime and all that. And then get fired because I stayed up thinking about it. Here Paul says here. For I know that is in me. Now who, is, who am I? I am the soulish part. That's me. My mind, my will, and my emotion. That's who I am. And I get offended about that. If you can tell me anything about me. I get offended about it. You, you, you see? And that's the reason I use rationalization and justification for anything that I do. I got a reason that I did. Yeah. I cheated because she cheated. If she hadn't have been cheating and everything, I got what's good for the goose, good for the gant. I can show you better than I can tell you. Huh? I rationalize and justify. I justify, well, you know, I didn't do it like they did. I either I had enough fret and nerve to, 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 to repeat what I heard is not what you do. It's how you do it. Two plus two is four, any kind of way that you put it. But I rationalize and I justify. And that's the reason Paul said, I know that in me, that is in my flesh. And quit letting this be a bad word to your flesh. Let it be what it is. Let it be what it is. It's my mind, my will, and my emotion. All flesh is flesh. And flesh don't change. That's just like you can't take a dog and a cat and make nothing else. They mate together, you ain't making nothing else. It take a dog and a dog to make a dog. I got Bible on it. Jesus said, what's born of the flesh is flesh. After Adam sinned, the Bible says he begot a son after his own image. David said, I was conceived in sin. Every one of us come here corrupted. Every one of us come here with that virus of sin in our mind, our will, and our emotion. The more confidence. Now, think about what we're talking about tonight. That is, why should I live a spiritual life? Now, I'm going to live probably in one of these areas right here. Now, you got what you call an airhead that they live out here. They don't use their mind, their will, emotion. They ain't live by the spirit of nothing. They live according to their body. They just stay in the gym. They just, <laughs> they can't pull out a boot. But they look good. They just keep looking straight. Don't look at them. You ever got with somebody and you can find out and everything? This right here ain't nothing but a dressed up garbage can. You sure is pretty, but we can't even have a conversation. You ain't got nothing to talk about. 
You empty. But now that's just a few folk. And I told the young folk, I told them this one time, I said, look, I said, everybody pretty when, they, when they're young. I said, don't bank on that. It ain't going to last. Don't bank on that. It's leaving. Every one of us got pictures when the old Lord have mercy. Yeah. So this right here is going to take care of itself, the body. But this area right here is where most people are going to spend the rest of their life, even in church, even after they say it. I got a Bible on it. When Paul is talking to the Corinthians, he said, when I came to talk to you, I couldn't talk to you as spiritual. Are you not yet carnal? Are you not, are you not yet operating out of your mind, your will, and your emotion? And that's the reason the Corinth church had so many problems. He said, I hear that there are divisions among you. You see, when you're dealing out of your mind, you start thinking that it's a difference between you and other people. And life has to show you that it ain't a dime with a difference between you and nobody else. The very thing that you point your finger at talking about somebody else, you'll find yourself down the road. Ain't no difference. But that come out of your mind. You don't mean no harm. At the time that you did that, come on, y'all, you were doing the best that you know how to do. You was doing your best. But you know what? Because I've been a fool, don't mean I got to stay one. Huh? This ain't Isaiah, but this the old man that used to sit on the line. He said, son, it's a poor wind that don't never change. <laughs> you ever seen folk like that? You go back to the high school reunion and say, this baby, he's the same fool that he was when we was in high school. You ain't changed one. One bit. But the Bible says, now I'm talking to folks, saved people. The Bible said we are changed from glory to glory. Yeah. And don't be ashamed of where God had to bring you from. Yeah. Why you said that, Pastor? The reason I'm saying it is, is because it's somebody that's where you used to be. It's somebody where you used to be. And Paul says that we are written epistles. We are living epistles, read of men, that men can see. Okay, I got another one, another Bible. He says, seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Where your weight at? Your weight is here, beloved. And that's the reason that we ain't got no time to be pointing a finger at nobody else. Because every one of us got our own mind. Amen. And your mind is out to sabotage your life. Yes, sir. Because whatever foolishness that you ever done, you might, please don't blame it on nobody else. You did that. You had a part. You had a speaking part. You was a part of that. Well, he did me wrong. and He shouldn't have done it. And if that, Why was you there? Everybody wasn't there. You was there. You was there hoping to get something out of it. And what you got, you didn't like. So ain't no use of blaming them. I showed up. I participated in, in this right. My mind, my will, and my emotions. What I'm trying to tell you, beloved, is shortcut, cut across the, the field. The reason you should live a spiritual life is because you can't trust you. Okay, I got Bible on that too. He said, Mother Nun, he said, there is a way. You ever been on a road that seemed right? Now, more than likely, somebody told you it wasn't. But it seemed right to you. It seemed right to you. And that's the reason I said that it's a blessing, Sister Hughes, to leave just a little space. That somebody else, somewhere, might know something that you don't know. And so then, uh, living within here won't get it. Because Paul says, I know that it is in me that it is in my flesh, my mind, my will, and emotion. And the more you got to brag about right here, the harder it is to let it go. 
Ooh, I got so much junk in my house. I ain't going to never use that junk. I ain't going to never wear it. <laughs> I ain't going to never, ain't nothing. But I can't let it go. My mama, how, how full of stuff. Stuff when we were 16, 18 years old. She got, she got report cards. And she got, I ain't coming back to get that stuff. I don't care. I don't like the teacher. Didn't like the school. It's a bad memory. I don't love it. I don't want to. Yet you're holding on to it. Because I, I'm, 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 these are trophies. But this is not real life. This is not real life here. What come to mind, everything come to your mind. And that's what's so bad about it, when people are living in here and they are the leaders. All right, all right. Because they think everything come to their mind. Not only are you, they supposed to do it, but you supposed to do it too. And when you don't do it, then you are rebellious. You don't love the Lord. They might go so far as to say you ain't saved. All right, all right. You don't bleed the word. What the word got to do with you meaning for me to take 20% of my money and give it to you? It got nothing to do with the word. That got to do with the foolishness is in your mind. Amen. And you want to build a bigger church so you can brag about it to the other preachers and everything. And, 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 and it, it, the church we got ain't a four field. We got plenty of room right here. I'm trying to build a room at my house. I was like, my husband won't come because he's saying y'all ain't nothing but foolish out there. They don't mean no harm. What they doing? They doing the best they can do at that time. Because they live it right here in their mind, their will, and their emotion. But the Spirit of God. Why should we live a spiritual life? Because through the Spirit of God, Brother Ray Alloway, God can do for us what we could not do for ourselves. All right. God can. He says, uh, dwelleth no, for the will is present with me. When I'm operating in my mind, my will, and my emotion, I tell y'all now, I ain't never been wicked, I, but I'm weak. I've been weak. I wasn't wicked. I, or whatever. I'm probably the only man that you know. That just ain't never, that, that just, just took his fist and just hit somebody or uh, done. The, I just ain't, I ain't never had that in me to hurt nobody or nothing. But I've been hit. <laughs> he said, he said, for the will is present. It's present. But, am I, well, I've got, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Why should I live a spiritual life? You see, he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is rewarded them to diligently seek him. I was lied to all the time that I was in church because they were operating here. They were doing the best they knew. They didn't know nothing about this right here. They didn't know nothing about this right here because this right here takes faith. It takes faith to walk in the spirit. This right here, you can see it. We buying choir robes. We marching down the road. It's all carnal. It's all stuff that you can touch, taste, and feel. But when you take God at his word, when you operate in faith, then you can operate in the spirit and you will get to that life. And this is why, right up in here, right up in here is where you have where the pastor and his wife get divorced and he end up marrying somebody else that's already in the church. The one you, <laughs> right, right up in here. Operating, but they're doing the best that they can do at that time. See, let's leave this alone about who good and who ain't who bad. All right. All right. Let, let's leave that alone, okay? We don't have to do that tonight. You can do it when you leave here after tonight. But right now, while we're looking at the truth, we're in the fantasy world about some of us good and some of us bad. We all the same. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. he, he don't make no difference to the church in Corinth. He says, for I know that it is in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. So my answer is not here. Why should we live a spiritual life? Because the answer to living is not within your mind. 
And that's reading Paul said, look you among you and see your calling. How not many wise, not, not many noble. Folks that got big degrees and folks that got doctors and lawyers and, and, and teachers. And I, I, I can remember in every uh, town you go in, uh, uh, Mother Nun, they got a certain uh, Baptist church where the teachers go to. They got a certain, t- the teachers, all, second Baptist, oh, that's where all the teachers go there. In Little Rock, St. Mark, oh, St. Mark, that's where all the lawyers go. You see? See, all of them got the same mindset. And you all running things, and you're whatever. But you see, I got that just right whooping. I don't want to run nothing no more. I don't because I know where you're running to. I know where it's going. You, you, you see, I don't want to be on my deathbed and it finally come to me. It come to me. I know, but uh, as much success as Muhammad Ali had, right. and Muhammad Ali, some of y'all are too young. That Muhammad Ali was a bad man. He, he was a bad man. Anytime, he, he was the one that started it about telling you when I'm going to whoop you. He said, I'm going to let you go about two rounds, but the third round is when you finna fall. You're going down. And then he delivered with him. White folk didn't like him because they said he talked too much. And he said, you know, they want his son to listen to win and everything because he more like they typing everything. But, 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 but he was a bad man. But, but at the end of his days, Fred, he said something that was very insightful. He said, all the money I made and all of the uh, accolades I got, he said, did none of them mean nothing. He said that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He said, it didn't, it didn't mean nothing. He went from wife to wife, from woman to woman. <laughs> He's following the teaching mm-hmm. of the honorable Elijah Muhammad, mm-hmm. who was doing the same thing. But they was doing the best. You see what I'm saying? They saw where that how Christians were being misused by their religion and, and how that they, they, they had no pride in themselves. I understand what they were doing, but they were operating out of this. They weren't operating out of the spirit. They weren't none of God. All right, all right. And you can't, why should you live a spiritual life? Because you ain't going to get to where you want to go unless it's through this. It just ain't going to happen. I don't care how many degrees you got. I don't care what the name of y'all church is. I don't care how uh, eloquent your pastor is. I don't care whatever. I listen to folk preaching now and everything, and I said, they ain't talking about nothing. Because all they know to do is talk about what you need to do. You never preach the gospel. You never talk about what Christ did. Being saved, being Christian is not about what you do. It's about what Christ did on your behalf. It's about what he did. When I understand what he did and I believe that, uh-huh. then the Bible says that, that, that from the heart man believeth unto righteousness. In Romans 4, he says, to him that worketh not. God don't want your stuff, you nasty. Why should you live a spiritual life? Because you nasty. Your stuff is nasty and it's going to produce nastiness you ever done something good and then it turned nasty because folks didn't give you the credit that you're supposed to get for it <laughs> I've seen it happen in church I don't know how many times I came up with the whole program they said nothing about me now, not, not only do you get mad your whole family get mad ain't but a few days before all y'all walk out Good as I've been to everybody. I've been good to everybody ever been here. Good as I've been to them. Some of them walk off talking about something they were mistreated. Ain't nobody mistreated you. That's in your mind. What you think you're going to get when you got people? When you got people, what you think you're going to get? I'll take your time. What you need to be interested in, am I getting the correct teaching? All right. All right. You ain't got to interact. You ain't got to do nothing. Get your teaching. Hit that door. You ain't got to stop at the parking lot. You ain't got to talk to nobody and go. I ain't never mandated you had to that know nobody. And that's including me. Because Amen. Amen. most of y'all, 99, 95% of I don't even know where you live at. I really don't. Because it ain't about that. What it's about is, it's about the right doctrine, the right teaching. You see, because I promise you, Tango, if I had known better, I would have done better. 
But at the time, I was doing the best I knew to do. I was operating according to that. They told me, Vanna Jr., that right in, I had to get my mind. I got my mind made up. You got to get your will together. You see? And then emotions, oh my God, I come out to sanctify it. We, we couldn't. The, the organ player, you know, I couldn't hardly feel nothing until he, I'd be so happy when he get up, when he get up and go over there and get on that organ. And then he had a way of just hitting that first note. You like that? Oh, Lord. I'm trying to jump them hates up off me. They told me I could do that. They said, you can praise your way. You can praise your way into a blessing. Just as foolish as it can be. But that's what I'm operating over here in my flesh. So fleshly. And you know what? It just makes sense. At the end of the day, Tango, can't nobody help you but God. Can't nobody help you but God. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go to Galatians. Galatians, the fifth chapter. Why should I live a spiritual life? Why was Paul so upset in the day? What was the big deal? Why was he? He went so far in the first chapter to say that, that if anybody come to you preaching another gospel, he said, let him be a, give me that over there on the first chapter, maybe about the uh, first seven or some verse. Let me see, Galatians 1. Uh, yeah, Galatians 1 at 6. This is why he upset. And the reason he's so upset, y'all, because Judaizers had come in telling them that they need to do this and do that. God had given Israel a law, but the purpose of the law, it was just a schoolmaster. It was trying to teach them something. It wasn't trying to bring them into uh, salvation, Bella. It, it was... The Romans in Romans, Paul says the law was given that the whole world might become guilty. In other words, trying to convince you you need to live a spiritual life, eating from the tree of the of, of, of knowledge, good knowledge of good and evil don't help you. Don't don't help you. I know I wasn't supposed to smoke no dope. I couldn't wait to smoke some dope. It never crossed my mind not to smoke no dope. They said, I didn't know what it made you feel like. And then smoking cigarettes, I know I wasn't supposed to smoke them or nothing. In fact, the first time I smoked them, I I didn't like it. But I kept smoking until I did. (laughs) Knowing don't help me. See, there's some things that I got to get in my mind, Robert. Some things, I got to know some things. I got to get out of fantasy world. Mm -hmm. See, you see, there's some people in church. I heard them say it. They said, they said they don't see him. So what? No. So you ain't got to, you own the Holy Ghost. You, you, you ain't got to see him. You ain't got to do nothing wrong. Or whatever. I don't, I don't. You can justify, you can rationalize, you can put yourself in a fantasy land where you think something that's not true. It's not true. But it takes courage. It takes some humility to accept the truth. And the truth of the matter is, there is no good thing in me. And except I walk in the spirit, I'm going to fulfill the lust of my flesh. I don't care if y'all you saved. And see, they messed me up with that too. They said, now you saved. You are different. You different. And they had songs to go along with it. I looked at my hands. My hands look new. I looked at my feet. And they did too. I sang it. You sang it too. I, I know I was lying, but it sounded good and it rhymed. And it rhymed too. And then I, ooh, I, I like that. I, I still might sing that. Hezekiah Walker, that song. He, he had, what time you got? 6 30. Okay, I, I got the right time. Uh, he said, I'm tr- Lord, I'm running. Trying to make a hundred ninety-nine and a half won't do. Then he then he got a little little kind of remix that's all been the miss. I like that. You see? It sounds good to me and it's good to my flesh and make me think. I can't do it. I got to do like what was in, in that Duran and uh that fight that people got mad at. 
No more. Or like my 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 guy Eric Martin, when, when, like he said, he said he said he said, uh, Pastor, I just got to take a knee. I'm through. Yeah. I accept yeah. that there ain't no good thing that's in me. When I seek to do good, evil. If the Lord don't help me, I, I accept that. Now, when I accept that, that puts me in opposition to 99.9% of the church. And they're going to say, what are that man teaching y'all to sin. I don't know how to teach you to sin. You knew how to sin before you met me, didn't you? Did I, did I teach? Did I, I taught you how to sin. Matter of fact, didn't nobody teach me. It, it's in me. Paul says, said, I find, I consent with my mind that the law is good, but I find within me, that is within my flesh, another law. Warring against my mind. See, Donald Jr., uh, I preached for 25 years, and, and, and ain't none of this come to me because I was up under a whole legalistic system where they was teaching us to depend on this and can get to this right. And here I am, I'm saved, and got man thinking about, and saved, God done blessed me, man. I got money in every bank, I'm driving cars. That I, that I saw other folk drive, living in a nice house and everything, and trying to figure out how to commit suicide. But I thank God for the whooping I got. Yeah. I hope you get one. I hope you get one of them change your mind whooping. Because right. I tell folk, I say, God bless you, but first you got to embarrass you. That has got to be a complete collapse. Yeah. If you still think you know something, God can't help you. If you still able to stand up and everything, and that's some people like that and everything, and they, what they love to use, they love to use this term right here, I never. I never. I never. Well, I have, and I'm glad of it. I'm glad of it, because I know ain't nothing special about me. I can't look down on nobody else or nothing, and that which I hadn't done, I put a yet on it. I hadn't done it yet. He said, I marvel you so soon removed from him that called you in the grace of Christ. In other words, when God was helping you, you, you came. The way you got saved was you realized you couldn't help yourself. And so then you threw yourself on the mercy of the court. Mm -hmm. I ain't got no case. The facts and the law is against me. Everything is against me. I'm guilty. And so I'm just putting myself at the mercy. And we find out that we don't have to be right, that God went and made us right by leaving heaven and getting on the cross and shedding his blood. And if I believe on his death, burial, and resurrection, he will account that action unto me, impute the righteousness unto me. He will make me righteous. He'll give me his righteousness. 5 and 21, 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. He that knew no sin became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. So he gives me his righteousness. Right. Now I'm righteous. Now. Thank you, Lord. Now. Now shall we continue in sin that grace will abound? God forbid. How then shall shall we that are dead? You got to believe the whole gospel. You got to believe you died with him. So therefore that old man is dead. You don't owe that old man nothing. Now you walk in the newness of life. Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. And so now we live. Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless. Nevertheless, I live. But the life I live, I live through the Son of God that died for me. So now I no longer live in my mind, my will, and my emotions. But I live through the Spirit, the Spirit of God. His Spirit. So, he said, how do you go back to this? This right, this ain't going to work. You have fallen from grace. Give, give, give me the fifth chapter. I got to get that. I ain't got for six minutes. I got to get that. Why should you live? It's one thing, Valentine, for you to tell me something, but when you give me a reason, when you help me get an understanding, help, help me to understand. All right. They never gave me an understanding. Thank God for Manasseh. Mm -hmm. I, I thank God for Manasseh. I didn't want to do it. It didn't make no sense to me. Or nothing. I said, God, all these churches you got, why you need another church? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with and God, he, he told me this right here, Banner Jr. He said, what you're dealing with in Helen, in this area, you, you, you're dealing with apathy and ignorance. Apathy and ignorance. 
and he taught me what ignorance means because it had a negative connotation to me. He said, ignorance comes from a Greek word, agnoia, which simply means you don't know. Everybody ignorant about something. I just don't know. It, it's not, you know, not stupid. I'm just ignorant. I don't know. He said, you can deal with that. He said, but apathy is don't care. And he said, now, if you got somebody that don't know and don't care, he said, leave them alone. I ain't been frustrated the whole time I've been pastor. Folks been telling me, how you do this? You a lawyer and a pastor? How you do it? Because I, I ain't none of God. I let God be God. I just do my little assignment, my little thing that I do. I ain't got no matter you passing or anything. I ain't got none of y'all calling me with your problems and all that stuff. Because I tell you in a minute, I got baby. I got the same problems. I can tell you who I take mine to. You can take yours to him too. Because I can't solve mine, so I sure can't solve you. Ain't no God. He says, um, go down to maybe to verse 19. In the first verse, he tell him, go back to the first verse. I got six minutes. I'm going to run through this. He said, the first verse, he says, stand fast in the liberty where will Christ have set you, made us free, and be not again tangled with the yoke of bondage. You see, in your mind, your will, and your emotions, you're in bondage. You're in, you, you in conflict with everybody. I, I meant that sermon. I preached Sunday. Leave me alone. You can leave me alone. My, 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 now you're talking, my mind is made up. My heart is set. And that is that I can't trust my mind, my will, and my emotions. I can't trust it. The Spirit of God will take me and give me to a place. He will help me to do that which I could not do for myself. It will produce the life. It will produce the fruit that, that, that will bring a good life. You can't miss it. The Spirit operating in your life, you ain't going to miss it, baby. I don't care how foolish that you was. I don't care how messed, I don't care how angry you were. I don't care how, how, how resentful you were. I don't care how, they, you're going to amaze folk and, and they're they going to try to give you some credit and then you're going to go back if you take the credit. But if you realize that it's not you, but it's Christ that's operating on the inside of you. I tell Robert all the time, I said, boy, God make me look like I got a whole lot of sense. I've been riding sometimes, you know, I, you see the, uh, your, your, your reflection in the, in, the sto in the stores, in the windows and everything. I'm riding, man. I'm so clean that it seemed like I cut two or three folk. And then I'm riding in the S550 and the boy said, boy, why I look like somebody. Just, just as foolish as a bull ramus monkey. But I know it. I know it. And see, somebody will tell me, that Fred, they said, oh, man, don't put yourself down like that. No, but I'm not putting myself down. I just done got off of my drug of choice. Yeah. All right, all right. And that's fantasy. I'm not walking. I don't owe you that no more. I don't owe you no more. I'm comfortable by myself. Yeah. I'm comfortable with myself. Yeah. I, I am. And I had to get like that because all of that, what we going to do, will keep you messed up. Now, we ain't going to do nothing. You do what you got to do, and I'll do what I have to do. Amen. Amen. We ain't all in the same grade. Amen. I can't explain to you because you ain't done the work. To get here. You don't understand this right here. You think this right here is wonderful. You don't understand. And, I, and I, that's okay. Because why? You're doing the best that you know to do. I got three minutes. Okay. He says, go down to uh, 21, maybe. Quickly, quickly. Okay, go back up to 19, 18. It says, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. It's just like oil and water. It's like law and grace, Vanda Jr. This right here against this right here. They warn against one another. Right. What you going to do? What you going to do? Are you going to operate in your mind, your will, and most? Are you going to let the spirit go? Are you going to do like Paul says, that which was gained to me, I counted as nothing, that I might know him. Yeah. All, your, all his accomplishments and everything, Carl, he counted them as nothing. He says, and these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. In my mind, will, and emotion, this is what's going to come out of it. Idolatry. I'm going to idolize the pastor, idolize the church, idolize the bishop, idolize positions, idolize the choir robes, idolize the building, idolize what we doing, idolatry. Witchcraft, hatred. Variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, 
Indian, murder, drunkenness, reverence, etc., of the which I tell you before as I tell you time, but that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, folks that do that, before they get saved, that, 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 that's what folks do that ain't saved. Now, you can do that. That's not going to make you do, not go to heaven or nothing like that. But he was saying that folks that live like that do not inherit the kingdom of God. Right. Now, he said, but why should we live a spiritual life? And I'm coming home. I got two minutes. Yeah. It's because of the fruit that the spirit mm. yields. It ain't got nothing to do with you. All right. All right. See, see. Y'all had me, I said, ooh, y'all, you need to show more love. I can't show love. It ain't in me. Ain't nowhere in the Bible that it said that I'm capable of loving. But the fruit of the Spirit All right. is love. But you told me I didn't believe the word. You didn't teach me the word. You didn't want me to believe the word. You wanted me to believe you. That's what you wanted. You wanted me to set you up on a, on a pedestal mm. with your insecure, narcissistic self. Mm. But you know what? You can leave mm. me alone. Because yeah. you don't like me no way. When I got through doing everything, you still, I heard things that you said. Mm-hmm. And it's all right. He says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, yeah. joy, Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. This is what the spiritual life is going to give me. Where I was able in the spirit to let that woman offend me and not cause a big uproar. Yes, sir. Because I really wanted to. I wanted to say, lady, you wrong. Here you got people, all kind of folks that's here. And everything. And what made it so bad was somebody passed by when it was going on, and they and I spoke, "Hey, pastor, you know I'm a pastor. Mm-hmm. And you're cussing like a saint. <laughs> <laughs> Don't care." So, uh, but meekness. But that come from spirit. They don't come from me. Mm-hmm. Well, I know what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I wanted to settle straight. You see, it ain't gonna come from me. It's got to come from something. Why should we live a spiritual life? Because the things that's going to cause for me to have the life that I really desire. Uh-huh. Yeah. See, I didn't want to go to jail in there at Walmart. I didn't even want to get to fighting with that woman. Or, uh, it was going to be embarrassing. And, you know, you got, you got two people acting a the fool. They don't know who the fool is. All right. <laughs> it's just kind of like in the game. I'll be watching the NBA games. And somebody beat them, elbow somebody, and then the other person come and retaliate. Where well, they get the guy, they didn't see the first lick that was shot. They, they saw the second one. Uh-huh. That's enough. Clap your hands for the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Let's give the Lord another hand pray. Yeah. Great job, Pastor. Great Thank job. I, I was zeroed in on that, man.